one backseat driver, isn't there? She should have done that. There's always one. Car don't leave Oldham. Destination after 300 yards. The destination is on the left side of the road. Hello and welcome back to another video. So this is us struggling our way to a place. A place that we knew was rather remote and we're in Yorkshire by the way. So we know this place is remote, we're not quite sure how to get there. And one of us, who shall remain nameless, decides that they're going to follow a footpath across the moorland that looks like it was going in the right direction. And guess what? The footpath was great until it eventually just petered out into nothing and we ended up here in what I can only describe as a bog, a marsh in the middle of the moor. We walked for miles and miles and the ever-increasing threat of the daylight disappearing was always upon us. So we're under pressure here. It's early January 2022. Like I say, it's going to go dark in a couple of hours. We've still yet to get to the place. Connor's with us. He's not been out with us for a while. Kerbex UK. And there's me, James, Roy, and somewhere, who shall uh, come into view now, was John, who was swearing blind that it was that way. But anyway, let me share some of this journey with you. Right, join the scenic route. Well done, James. <laughs> no. Right, you see that path? Yeah. Yeah, well, see the markers? This is ridiculous. What? <laughs> I feel like a good Sunday stroll. I want to trip out, they said. <laughs> <laughs> Are we there yet? Yeah, it's saying, James. <laughs> What we're trying to do is negotiate the best way across this marsh without plunging into it and disappearing. It was so difficult. If you wonder what I'm carrying in the case, it's the drone that never got used, by the way. So that was another waste of time. Did you, is it all right there where you are? Yeah. Head over here. Just walk on the tufts. Walk on the tufts. Dear, oh dear. No, you're good at leaping. <laughs> oh, James made it unscathed. I'm sure we can. Have you done it, James? What? Have you done it? <laughs> How come the fat leg gets <laughs> out of the way? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> We're back in Ellen Wheel. Anyway. After walking what seemed like miles and miles and miles, we ended up walking in a massive semicircle and ended up about two miles away from where we'd initially parked the car. So we'd just come round almost in a, a damn circle. So having given up ever getting to this place, we decided that we we're going to have a brew um, because I've lost all hope now of ever getting here. So, brew time. <laughs> If you're wondering at this point where John and Connor is, because Roy's filming, they're actually still out on the moor trying to catch up with us. We all got hopelessly split up, so they do eventually catch up with us and we saved them some tea. Got biscuits. Did we do get 
get to where we're going, yeah, you won't see a brew time because we've had to have a brew here because we're all exhausted. You got that bad. Forget filming brew time. We almost get in. I need to keep this going for about four months. Anyway, despite all the setbacks, we decided we'd press on and try to get to our destination. And I'm really glad we got here because it is absolutely stunning, this place. So it's a water garden and it's fed obviously via a brook that runs into this reservoir that then goes down that feed underneath towards this pump house here. And you'll see the first of a few fountains that aren't in full flight at the moment for want of a better word but in that pump house you can crank the controls and make that fountain go higher but as you can see the water then goes on this journey down there down that sort of like culvert and runs onwards now and feeds the rest of the water garden so with the light failing we had to just crack on and get the footage so not a lot of talking now as I show you this place So far absolutely beautiful but it's about to get a whole lot better and I will tell you about this place and its origins and its story in a moment but just take a look at this that we're about to see. Okay, so this is Castle Car Water Gardens, and as you would expect, these are gardens, beautiful water gardens associated with a castle that's nearby. These gardens were built, and I'll give you an exact date, but around about the early 1870s, and the reason they were built, or they were funded by Halifax Water Corporation, as compensation for building the nearby reservoirs that are all around this area. So they obviously compensated the landowner, and with that money, the landowner built these wonderful gardens. They were designed by a Halifax architect called John Hogg. Now the water to this place is gravity fed. It falls about, of a, it has a fall of about 60 meters. And that fall enables it to power one of the fountains here that can reach up to over 100 feet and it's quite a spectacle. And once a year apparently they have an open day where you can come along and look at the fountain. And it's this, this one here in the middle of the, uh, the what they call the compensation lake. Okay, so we just go back over to the valve house a moment. Uh, in behind that door is lots of valves and you can turn wheels and stuff to power the fountains up But there's a, a stone there above it and I'm just gonna I've got a picture of it I'm gonna show you this picture and read it for you. So 1870 Halifax Corporation Waterworks uh, Luddenden, Luddenden Valley it says and you can pause that picture and you can read that at your leisure if you want But uh, yeah, there's the date 1870 And so finally, at dusk, with the light failing, we make it to Castle Car House.
I do apologise for the shaky footage here, but by now we were exhausted and we just had to get this filmed as quickly as possible. So I'm not using my GoPro with all the image stabilisation on, I'm just using my normal camera and trying to take in as much as this of this wonderful landscape that I can and this hidden gem that we'd strove all day to find. What a place indeed. Okay, so Castle Cow was built as a mock Tudor slash Norman castle. Now, that doesn't mean it's not old. It was uh, construction started in 1859 and it took eight years to complete. The architect was, was called Thomas Risley. It was built for somebody called Captain Joseph Priestley Edwards. And there's quite a sad history to the place. But in the meantime, let's just take a look around. And as we approach... You'll see it's even got its own portcullis. It was built with its own portcullis. How fantastic is that? Here it is in a bit of better light. Different cameras producing different um, different results in, in the failing light here. But let's take a look now as we go inside and look up at the, uh, the missing floors. We'll go inside this little doorway and try and go up these stairs. A lot of the most of this castle now has been demolished, as you will see when I show you the surrounding area. Look at that. Yeah, it's got a bit now. Yeah. Right, so going through here. Right, this is the original turret. Seems pretty solid though. Shit. Solid. Wow. Solid. Yeah. Watch it at the top, it's sloppy. It's coming out there. I'll add it to you so you can get it. Okay. Stand on there. I've got it. Go on, you've got it then. I am gone. Okay, okay I'm just, just nice and still. We'll, we'll, we'll be pushing me forward, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Push me into the back. Right, okay. Right, okay. That's fantastic, that, there. Right. So how did this place used to look? Well, this is it. And as you've seen from what we've shown you so far, the vast majority of it has been pulled down. So let's go back to the owner, the original owner, Mr. Joseph Priestley Edwards. Well... Very strangely, he and one of his sons were killed in a railway accident before the castle was completed. The work was continued and the castle was finished by his, one of his remaining sons. And that son only lived in it for about four years before selling it on. The castle was considered to be quite an unloved place, despite the fact that it was very grand. It was cold. It was played with midges in the summer um, there were conflicts over rights of way with the other landowners and when it went for auction in 1962 it was withdrawn from the market because the bidding only reached apparently £9,250 so demolition commenced now why was it not completed? well apparently the workmen are said to have abandoned the demolition because they said the place was haunted well we never saw or heard anything but you can't argue with the workmen that were probably there every day pulling it down. So that's the sad history of uh, Castle Carr. Not sure of the date on that picture, but it was used as a hunting lodge at some point before in the 1930s, I think. Rumour has it that ammunition was stored there during the Second World War. And then, as I say, in the mid to late 60s, the demolition started. And I've got a lot of that information from the website you see there on the, uh, on the picture, which is... Um, katelysett.co.uk lost houses so thank you to that website where James is yeah I'll get you back James bloody hell look at the old fireplace there do you want go for it? I'm better off without the light at the moment it's because this camera will be there can I have the light to go upstairs? yeah I just love this fireplace fantastic look at that 
And I bet this place, it would have been so amazing to have walked around it before it was demolished because I bet it was such a, a grand place. One one description uh, says it was kind of Hollywood, sort of Hollywood-esque. It was built so dramatically and in the style, of, like I say, of Tudor and of, of a Tudor and Norman castle. And looking up here, look at that fireplace up there on one of the floors. Brilliant. And just out at the front of the house, to the, to the left-hand side... These apparently are the remains of the kitchens. Um, I think you're looking at. I think there were there were remains of ovens down here. Um, so yeah, very interesting. And such a tragedy that they pulled this place down. It really is. And there you can see the house there. In, in, that's what where they are in relation to the house. And all round in the grounds. This is just in front of the castle are the remains of that abandoned demolition job. Look at the stone there. And then we head down, back down now towards what I said was what appeared to be the, the kitchen area that had been demolished and these kind of um, window sills, window frames. I don't know how to describe these. The foliage taking over and then here is what appears to be some kind of storage place I don't think that's a fireplace it looks like a storage area it's maybe called storage and then I found the doorway and I had to just go inside and take a look now I was convinced I couldn't see properly but I was convinced this was probably a bit of a haven for bats just as I stepped inside, although I didn't see any hanging up. Are they bats up there? I can't tell. Can you tell? But anyway, I realised um, there they were possibly bats on the ceiling. Don't forget, I can't see as well. I'm only looking at this in hindsight. So I just quickly made a, uh, a quick escape because uh, I didn't want to disturb anything. So we took the lights off and out we went. You'll see here more stone in the... Uh, in the grounds now as you can also see here the light is fading we're losing light fast and given the journey that we had to this place we were filled with dread about how to get back because we knew we had to make a journey back okay so how do we get back to cut a very long story short uh, we had to do quite a bit of navigation we had to leave a different way and as we were leaving this different way, we were heading for a track, a path that you could maybe drive a four-wheel drive along that we could actually follow in the dark um, and we could get out of this place. But it led us to way away from where our cars were. So I had to organise with someone to come out, pick us up and drive us back round to our cars. As we're leaving this different route, we're going through these gates and all the rest of it and on the gates it's saying private property so i'm warning you now we came in from a different angle if you go in where the to castle car we believe it to be private property so you know maybe just leave it at this video and go on one of the open days anyway we finally managed to get back across the moor um back to our cars the mist did come down the mist descended Luckily, we had some decent torches and we managed to follow that track back to uh, towards the main road and eventually civilization. And that's the story of our journey to the Castle Car Water Gardens and the castle itself. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Take care. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.